Ladies and gentlemen, so we've got a review today of the case called Colink Observatory. So basically, I'm going to be putting a build in there, but you're not going to see me putting a build in there with time lapse or anything like that. We'll just see like one minute I'm talking about the case, and then the next there'll be a build in there, and then we'll be talking about whether there's room in there, what the price point is of the case, how easy it was to build in there, aesthetics, and what comes in the case. So let's roll on with the video. So what comes with the case? Well, the case does not come with no instructions. They are on the box and it's pretty self-explanatory. But if you're an amateur kind of builder, you're going to probably have a bit of a paranoia attack or where things go and stuff like that. But this is what I'm here for. So you can go through all of that without instructions. So first off, let's talk about what we do get with the actual case itself. And we get a remote control for RGB. We get a bracket that is not actually connected to the back of the case. It's just separate. But I'm having a bit of a mare trying to get the bracket off. But it's not going to be long. And here we go. So he's got it off. So we get a bag of screws. We get the bracket. And we get a remote control RGB controller. So we control all the colours that we can do. Now, I'm using a motherboard that's not going to be RGB at all. So you can sync the RGB with this motherboard if it had RGB sync. But as it doesn't, you won't need to worry about that. So you can use this RGB case without using any RGB motherboards. But technically, it's uh, just sync it with remote control or do what you want to do with remote control. This will go on the case. It's got an adhesive on the side there and two screws that you can screw down. And the screws come in the bag. Um, it's got air holes to make it breathe for the PCB board. It looks like you can put in um, about six fans, it looks like. You've got a Molex connector. Would be nice to see a SATA connector. Um, you've got a power LED, so this will connect into the back of the motherboard, I guess. Um, back of the motherboard, back of the case. And then you've got an RGB strip, so it looks like you can put RGB LEDs in there as well that might be coming with Colink. But I can't see anything where the remote control uh, base is. There's normally an anti, uh, well, just like an RF uh, controller or like LED bulb thing, and you put it at the top of the case and you control it by remote control. So I can't see that yet, so I'll have to have a look in more detail on that with the case. Anyway, you've got a plastic tab there, take that out and then it will reveal the battery so it can start to make its connection. The battery is a CR2025 battery, so it's like a watch battery but a little bit bigger. Then you take that out and then it will make contact with the remote control and it start working. You've got on, auto, off and all that as well. So we take the tab out and then that makes contact with the battery and then you can just press this in here, like so, if I can do it. So we pull the battery out of the side and make sure I don't touch the bottom like I did. And uh, this is what makes contact. So the battery's got to be facing down for it to work and clip it back in and it's ready to go. And you've got on, auto, off, S plus, S minus, M minus, M plus, uh, this looks like a brightness or contrast control and then all the RGB colours that you can have. So it looks like you've got white there, definitely. So that looks cool. So we'll test this all out and see what we can do. In the bag, we get all the screws as normal. So that's pretty good. You get three cable uh, tyres. Uh, okay, three cable tyres you get in there. And then we get the screws in a bag. So we get... F um, it looks like, yeah, we get four screws that are plastic with Phillips end to it. So obviously attach the, the, the panel one and the tempered glass. Then we get five standoffs, the brass the colours, and then all the rest of the screws to go in there. So that's cool. And then we get some mechanical hard drive screws. On the top, we get two USB 2s. We get a USB 3. We get a Type-C. Uh, we get a RGB button and a power button. And then we get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a microphone jack and the LED indicators for your hard drive and also the power button. And also on the top, you get a magnetic filter. And this supports the 240 rad at the top, hopefully. And as you can see, it comes with its own RGB. So you get four RGB fans, so three at the front and one in the back as an exhaust, three for the intake, a nice honeycomb look of the case. It's also got thumb screws on the front. I actually like this design. This is kind of, Looks a bit similar to Corsair, but not quite the same. And then I'm going to pull the front off, because that's how you would get the radiator out. Which would be like so. Cool, this is quite weighty. This is good. This is a good idea. 
because that means I can actually take this glass out and clean it properly and then get in the, the honeycomb bit and clean in there properly. So they've really thought about that. I like that idea. Kudos to Coolink or Colink. I like that. But four screws is quite a lot. Can you calm it down, please, and just give us like, I don't know, something a little bit more simpler. So you've got the three RGBs on the front there. We've got a bit of shock absorption on um, the rubber feet. So making sure that the fans don't vibrate too much. It's got this funny little design, a little curly whirly with spots all on the actual fans. I'm guessing it gives it a little bit more of a different way for it. I don't know how that works, but we've got an intake that comes in from the front, but there's a hole, a gap about this big at the bottom to get intake in, but there's no intake through the sides of this glass. Can't really figure out how there'll be much of an intake. Oh, there, on the sides. We've got like a filter system on the side there. So we can get a little bit of airflow through the front. So if I turn this to the side, we've got another four screws, so that's eight in total. And then we've got this lovely glass as well. I reckon the tint of this is probably about 5%. I'm not even sure it's even 5%. It looks like it's basically nearly just clear all the way through. Now it has got a little bit of a tint to it. About five to 10% of tint on there. Definitely. So that glass is nicely cut out, no sharp edges or nothing like that. Oh, nearly broke it. So let's talk about inside the case. Then we've got a nice deep cut hole there for a 360 rad and average rads that go in there. So two, you can put 120 in there, 140, 240, 280, 360. I think you could definitely get away with a 240 in there. Yeah, you could get a 240 in there. It'll be a bit of a push, but it'll still go in there. But you can get a 360 in there as well, because the fans are outside, whereas the radiator needs to be inside. So all you're doing is compensating for the radiator to go inside, then the fans are outside. So taking cool air straight into the hot radiator and then kind of blow straight in and then exhaust straight out of the case. But also I'm going to have a 240 at the top, rad, and then that's going to be basically exhausting hot heat from the MOSFETs and the chokes, and also from the CPU, uh, graphics card area, and um, if you've got NVMEs, anything that's heat. I just think if that heat comes through the graphics card, it's gonna be blowing out. No, yeah, this is okay, it's old school. What I don't like about this case is that they put the cables right in the front here where it will be seen with the tempered glass on the front here. So the tempered glass right here, you'll see the cables. They should have aimed it at the back there, but it does come with a USB three on there and all the cables to connect up the IO. But these other cables, a bit of a spaghetti junction, not impressed with that. Um, HD audio, but the reset switch is uh, nicely braided, nicely cabled, I mean. USB is a uh, spaghetti junction there as well. All the other cables are nicely braided. I don't understand that, they could have kept it going. But it is a budget case, as you can see. We've got nice little cut out holes there, so nothing to cut your fingers or anything like that. No grommets, but we've got three more cutouts there. We look like we've got loads of cable points all in there. We've got more cutout points as well. So that's pretty cool. They cut out quite a few bits there. And you've got a big IO bracket um, hole, so you can stick your uh, CPU air cooler on or water cooler in or AIO cooler in, in there, and that'd be no problems whatsoever. So it's a little bit of a flex to the the side of the panel, but not too much. But no padding, no uh, sun dampening or anything like that. But on the back there is where you can put your SSDs on. Uh, so you unscrew this uh, panel and then you stick your SSD on. Uh, it's kind of different, kind of a bit more simpler, just like one straight screw and then a couple of screws to actually put your SSD on. There's a finger width of um, room to do your cable management. On the back here is where you're gonna connect this to your um, RGB connector. Uh, there's no other box on there, so I don't know where the RF connector would be, but all of these are connecting to straight to the box. But I don't know how it's gonna controlled, get controlled by the actual uh, case itself, unless it's on here. But we'll have to just have to work this out. I really don't have a clue where the receiver would be on here. This is different, I don't, I don't know. I Hopefully this will work. Anyway, you've got like a filter at the bottom and you just pull it out from the back, no problem whatsoever. Uh, there's no trays there for your mechanical hard drive, so you can just find one laying around in your old computer. 
Um, hopefully they're not all compatible, but the majority of them will fit in there if they're plastic and stuff. You've got a lot of room for a power supply. Anyway, after talking about this case, this it does say that you can put ITX, Mini ITX, ATX, uh, which is standard, and also saying that it can fit an extended motherboard in here. Now, I wouldn't want to put an extended motherboard in this case. This would be crazy. Um, I have got an extended motherboard. Um, I'm going to actually try to see if it could put that motherboard in there. But if you're going, I, don't, I just can't really understand why you want to put an extended motherboard in there. You would want to have at least just an ATX in there or something like that. So let me try seeing about this. Mm, uh, that is a no. You could not put an extended <laughs> motherboard in here. Where would you, you'd have to put the cables through there. It would look stupid. So that's a no. Where it says that you can put an extended motherboard in there, ignore that. You would not be able to do that at all. As you can see on the box, it does state that it can fit an extended motherboard. So MB support extended motherboard, uh, extended ATX. So E stands for extended ATX, ATX M, ATX and ITX. That's what it's saying it can support. It also says it can support 160 millimeters PSU to 200 millimeters and clearance VGA at 360 millimeters. I do have the RTX 2060, so I'm gonna put that in there and uh, see how much clearance we really do have. So what I'm gonna do is just put a build together and see how nice it looks aesthetically and how much room we've got to play with and uh, what these RGB fans look like. Well, at the moment, I'm having problems trying to push the motherboard in, uh, so you're gonna have to just watch yourself. Uh, probably need two people to obviously get it in there, but I just gotta squeeze it back. It looks like you have to put a little bit of uh, force there. So what I'm gonna do is just using a magnetic screwdriver, because you ain't gonna have to do this without one, and then try and, all my holes are nicely lined up. And I'm, there we go, I am pushed it there. It would be nice to have like standoff in the middle so I can literally take a little bit more control. All right, so the screws are hardly lining up. So if I take a closer look at the moment with the camera, then you can see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, like I have to, if I take the screw out, I'm gonna show you a little bit more close up what I'm talking about. So we've got need a bit more of a better alignment adjustment on uh, the standoffs where they need to be situated for the motherboard. All right, so this is without the screw in the middle. And as you can see, if I take the motherboard out, this is flushed, everything. I'm gonna put the motherboard in. Everything is nice on there. Now, if I push my fingers, that's how much pressure I should be putting on there to get the motherboard in. Now, I push it downwards and I'll get a little bit of an angle, but everything still looks perfect. Now, I've just got to push a lot more harder so I can get it in. So if we had a standoff on there, it would make things a little bit easier. So this is why I'm saying that you need a magnetic screwdriver because it'd be really hard to get a screw like this, just putting it in and then pushing it in to line it up. So what I'm gonna do is just use a magnetic screwdriver, I've got it at the end, check my lines, uh, my holes I mean, and I can get that one. But not too tight, because I'm gonna have to maneuver the motherboard around again. All right, there we go, so. As you can see, it's a little bit of a, a bit of a mission just to get this in at the start. Right, now I've got it in. Kind of. Yes, that's done. Now just with the other screws. So I had a few problems. So number one, the exhaust fan is not working. Well, it's obviously rotating around, cooling that stuff, cooling the components down. But um, the RGB is not working on the back there, but it's working all three fans on the front. So I'll have to get an RMA and get that sent off, which is really annoying because I had this case way before Christmas, I think like in November time, and the delivery driver uh, 
turned up with the glass smashed and now the glass is perfect and I put a build in and then the back RGB light is not working. Ah! But anyway, there's no way that you could put a 240 rad on the, on the top of here. It would not work. I only barely squeezed it in against the EPS connector, the eight pin connector as you know it. And um, basically I can only just get the 240 on the top of the rad um, to go on the top. So I left all the three fans on the front, as you can see, no problem whatsoever. I'm gonna turn it on so I can talk while I'm going through this. It's, it's okay, but actually before I turn it on, I'll turn it back off because I need to show you, um, I've got an RX 2080 Ti. I was gonna put a 2060 in there, but if you can put an RX 2080 Ti in there, then I'm sure you can put any graphics card in there. As you can see, there's plenty of room there and the cool air will drag straight over the graphics card and straight at the back. So I like that a lot. I think that's brilliant. Graphics card goes in there perfectly as I showed you. Um, I'm only using a 700 watt power supply so it's definitely not got enough. Oh, well, maybe it does. I think it's got another eight at the back there so I could plug that in. But it's out the way. It kind of covers up what's going on at the bottom. Um, on these cases, as you know, I don't like having so many freaking like long cables going into like a, a motherboard this size but if you've got a normal ATX size motherboard it's gonna be perfect oh yeah extended motherboard does not fit on there so 240 does not fit on the top of uh, 280 does not fit on here and barely fits a 240 on here with the radiator but definitely will fit a 360 and the 240 and a 120 and no 120 on the back so there's no 120 or 140 support at the back you can only fit 120 mil fan and you can slot it up and down and it gives you a centimeter of movement you've got seven expansion slots on the back one's already removed but you do have to flex it or like kind of break the metal and then after that you can't screw it back in and have it there uh, oh no you can you can screw it back in and have it there but you do have to break it off because it comes pre like like it's welded on or fitted on to the back of the PCI Express um, bracket so that's a bit annoying you do have a bracket as well where I can undo this uh, screw which actually needs a screwdriver to do it and this is what keeps all the brackets in place and stops them from moving around so it's a nice little feature on there power supply it's got plenty of room on there cable management was a bit difficult but if you take time you can do the cable management I'm not even going to show you the cable management because I, I feel really annoyed about it to be honest with you because um, there's only a like a centimeter space I've done worse I've done worse I've done better with less um the power sub the stroud has got a lot of room in there you haven't got any hard drive bays in there but if you do have a hard drive base then it's going to lower down the room that you're going to have for the actual um the front of the where you put the radiator in anyway so if you've got a 360 in there you can count it out of like trying to get hard drive in there because it all you could do it but it's just going to make it a bit of a mission with all the cables and that and here's a bit like spaghetti junction in there but other than that it's a nice case it's about I think it's £60 or £70, so it's reasonably priced, you get RGB and everything like that. But the whole point about coming to this video, you want to see if this case can fit mostly anything at a budget price. Does it cut my hands? No. Does it look aesthetic pleasing? Yes. It has got some really strong aesthetics right there, and it looks like it will be able to breathe straight over a graphics card. Now, if you just want to use this as a gaming machine and want to have more expensive components than you could do, because the cables would be easier to route through rather than the spaghetti junction ones that I've left in there to make it really awkward as a budget build to see how hard it was but you could put a nice build in there you could spend about a thousand pound stick it all inside here and then it will be fine but the radiator obviously I've got the 240 radiator in the top there it's not too bad it's going to do its job it's going to cool and it's got a filter at the top as well so there's no problem and I've got all that nice free fans just blowing air inside the case but also I've got a little space to breathe in some cool air so it's, imagine like there's a bit of cool air that you can feel breezing around like in the winter time and the house is a little bit cooler then it will go in there but my house is really hot so I'm just gonna have hot air in there so that's gonna be a problem for me um, but let's um, try these RGBs. Now, this is quite funny because I was like, where is the little LED, like uh, the receiver to obviously do this? But I don't need one, it's wicked. But the lights are a little bit dim. But here we go. I'll turn my lights down in a sec, but I'm gonna put the front back on so you can see what this all looks like. So I do like the look of the way the case is um, with the nice little tint and let's darken it down. Um, you see that motherboard in there is kind of like an old school uh, Skylake motherboard, so there's no real aesthetics to it. But I tell you what, with the RGBs going off in there, it doesn't bring it back to life and make it look really nice. I do like the front, but as I can, I can show you real quick, because uh, 
The fan's blowing in the background, but it's not actually working. So with the tinted glass, it does help this see a lot more. Now I'm using about four different lights that are around 56, 57 Kelvin. Um, 56 or 57,000 Kelvin, I should say. And um, they're bright on there. And as you could see before, it was harder to see. But now with that little tinted glass on the front, it makes it more punchier. So look, I've got the remote here and I could just literally play around with it. That, that's pretty sick. That, the colour looks really nice. Um, I wouldn't say it looks cheap or anything like that. I think it just looks more punchier. It looks like, oh, it's doing its own thing. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't know it can do that. Oh, uh, oh wow. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty sick. That is pretty sick. But the case is not all about RGBs and aesthetics. It's all about, is it going to breathe really well in the case? And just by looking at it and the way the fans are, it's not too loud. There's, what is it, five, six fans in there all together. And that's how loud it is in there. So it's not too bad. But I, I do like it. I wonder if I can make it brighter or dimmer. Oh, you can slow it down. Or what, what was I doing there? Oh. You could have just a minimalistic RGB. But that's the brightest it goes when I first got it in the box, I guess. Yeah, that's as bright as it's going to go. Um, what does that do? Oh. This is cool. I like this. What's that doing? Wow, I've never seen that. Uh, what else can you do? Nah, this is... Do you know what? You've got to buy this case. This is the RGB. I'm crazy. I know. Should you buy this case? Well, it depends. At the end of the day, this is a gaming case. It looks really nice. You want aesthetics and tempered glass, you've got it. You ain't just got it on the front or well, just on the side, you've got it on the side and the front, and you've got a plethora of uh, connectors at the top. So you can obviously connect in your microphone or your headphone jack. You've got your LED indicator to make sure your mechanical hard drives are working. Two USBs, USB free as well. You've got your power button, reset button, and you've got your RGB button that you can control if your battery is dead. The case fits most motherboards, but it will not fit an extended motherboard. So these are the cons. It says that it fits an extended motherboard, but it doesn't. It fits right up to a nice size ATX motherboard and all small ones after that and mediocre ones, it fits in there nicely. You'll be better off getting a normal size ATX motherboard because the cables will look nice and clean and more flush. Um, and you'll be better off getting a power supply that was more braided nicely. But this is not a problem with the case. Well, it is a little bit, but it's not. So technically, with the cables, with this case, it's got spaghetti junction cables, but if you're going to put a graphics card over the top and not use onboard graphics, it'll be fine. And yes, as I said, you can put in a minimum of like 500 to 1,000 pound build in here, and it would look quite nice. So there's no problem whatsoever there. It was a bit difficult getting the cables in, but if you take a little bit of time, it's going to be fine, no problem. And you do have wiggle room for a 120mm fan if your motherboard is a little bit awkward or a different manufacturer. So you can move the fan so it can fit nice and easier against the MOSFETs. And what else do you want to put in there? Well, actually, no, no, it ain't going to have a problem with the MOSFETs or nothing. I'm talking probably like the... Well, yeah, do you know like the way it dissipates heat on the MOSFETs on the bottom side? Not the top side where it exhausts, but the bottom side, you can got a bit of wiggle room there. But it doesn't look like you need the wiggle room, but it's there. But you only got an option for 120 at the back there, and that's about it. And obviously the expansion PCI brackets, once you snap them off, you can screw them back in. And they do come with screws in the bag, so it's not a problem. But it doesn't come with any screws to attach any water cooling on there. But it does come with four RGB, um, crazy RGB fans, and they're decent. And to honestly, you, I don't know whether you can make them slower or silent. I didn't even look at that. No. Nah. No, you can't do that. No control over the fans um, with the fan controller. You just have to do that in the BIOS and that. You can't even do it in the BIOS. Hang on, has that got louder? No, it's tripping up. Yeah, you can't even get this in the BIOS with the fans because the fans are connected to another box, which would be nice from Colink to obviously put a little fan controller in there. So you've got like at least a bit free, like different speeds, like slow, medium and, and fast. 
But no, nah, none of that. But anyway, if you like this review and you thought it was helpful, subscribe, share, like, follow me on all social media platforms. Check out the merch store down below this video. Everything in this computer build is going to be in the links in the description down below under this video. Go and check it out. Comment if you want to see more different like expectations of videos of like computer builds. Um, and tell me what you think about this case. And I'll see you next one. Thanks for watching.